Nothing personal, but I question Sam's decision to put a novice on this assignment instead of me. Mm. I seriously doubt you're qualified, so Sam and I could test your knowledge of ooh. Egyptology. Um, ooh. See, I'm pretty good at Egyptology, but I'm a little nervous now. I don't- this is not uh, in the Windows version. Oh, shit. Which Egyptian goddess was the mistri mistress of merriment? Okay. That one, right there. I'm gonna guess... Well, this is... This is Thoth or Tote. Is this copy protection by any I chance? I don't know if it's copy. I didn't find anything copy protection. Um, I'm just going to go with this one. Oh. You know, I think that's cracked. I don't okay, think... you win, cheater. <laughs> Looks like you're prepared for the assignment after all. Hacker, I'll let you any way you can. My bad. Pirate. So the first thing I usually do when I start a game like this is I save one and I call it started. Hey, did it look like we could uh, actually increase the detail or something up in the... Oh, huh, I wonder what that does. <gasps> oh, there's so much more detail. I usually put the speed up too, otherwise she um, she walks like a slug. There we go, it's better. You look like you're on crack. <laughs> Miss Bane? You find a curiously heavy object in the trash. It's a baseball. Who would, who would throw that out? Somebody who's really angry about the Yanks. You pick it up and place it in your purse. <laughs> Something you'll hear a lot. Uh -huh. And another thing we can do is, oh, this is now your desk. It's very old and looks like it hasn't been cleaned thoroughly in years, but it's sturdy and serviceable. The reason I'm doing an English accent for the narrator is because that's how it is in the game. It's very yeah, strange. I <laughs> the narrator is English while Laura Bow is Southern. I guess inside, every southerner is an English woman trying to get out. <laughs> yes. You peel up a corner of the blotter to reveal a small key. A small you key? pick it up and place it in your purse. I like how on the side of the text box, there's like a, there's a skull. I don't know if you saw that or not, but it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Um, and now we can actually, what the fuck, that's not inventory. <sighs> Use the key to open the drawer. You unlock the drawer. Unfortunately, the key permanently jams itself in the lock. Let's hope you never want to lock this drawer again. And what we just picked up is a press pass, but Ooh. it's not actually a press pass. <laughs> a press pass. It reads, press your pants while you wait. Low fats Chinese laundry. 5858 Broadway Avenue, New York. Oh, low fat to Chinese laundry. Oh, God. That guy is going to be, whoever voices him is going to have fun because, yeah, in the voiced version of this game, he's like so stereotypically he's, Chinese. It yeah. It's, it's not that the game is offensive. It's not offensive. It's just, it's, it's highly so stereotypical. Over the top. Yeah. It's highly stereotypical. And when they chose voice, voice actors, they just chose the programmers and their friends. It's just and, people like us doing the yeah. same types of silly voices. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> so, I don't mind. I don't mind when people. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind when people do uh, English accents or people like the super fans doing a Chicago accent. It's stereotype, but that's, that's okay. This is a fun, it's a fun game. I promise you'll like it. I'm so excited to be a member of the Trib staff. After all, I studied in journalism in college and never thought my first job out of school would be at, at the paper as prestigious as this one. I mean, that is unusual, isn't it? Uh, sorry, were you talking to me? Cause... Never mind. Aren't you Eddie Bedletter, the syndicated columnist? I'm a great fan of yours and I've read... Yeah, yeah, busy right now. Hmm. Nobody really likes me very much. I'm busy right now as well. Love to help you out with some something sometime though. And oh, oh, oh no. man, no, he's Love being to seductive. Help you out sometime though, yeah. maybe buy you dinner or something. Girly, girly, girly. As you can see here. Men's restroom. You can't go in there. That's the men's lounge. You glance around curiously, and there's no sign of a ladies' lounge. This is patently unfair. Yeah, because okay. um, reporters in the 20s, this is said in the 20s, there were no women. They were mm. not allowed. And so Laura is, uh, she's making a breakthrough here. That's why I think she's probably my, my favorite female character. I know she's super bubbly, but she's a smart character. She's super intelligent. She went to Tulane. She don't take no crap from nobody. I like her. <laughs> now, so 
You recall in Colonel's Bequest, we did have a notebook, but yeah, it no. wasn't used like this. Um, we didn't do anything with it, really. This is an interrogation notebook. <clears throat> and what we do is we ask about certain things. So, for example, I don't have to ask about all of this stuff, but I, I do because it's, it's fun. But I am going to ask about the flower shop in particular. And you will see why. What's the scoop on the flower shop? You mean the speakeasy? The flower shop's just a cover. Look up a fella there by the name of Ziggy. He knows a lot and tends to talk too much. So, um... Now when we ask him stuff... See, now it's the speakeasy. So we can ask uh -huh. people about the speakeasy, which is really important. It is. Where can I find this speakeasy? Just ask any cab driver. I'll take you there. It's a place disguised as a flower shop. Okay. And let's ask him about... Let's see. Let's ask him about Dr. Pippin Carter. He's one of the people at the burglary. What can you tell me about this Pippin Carter character? A queer bird, if I've ever met one. Kind of comes across as cultured. Yeah, and he's a loudmouth. You know what I mean? He's got a chip on his shoulder the size of the Brooklyn Ridge. Ridge? He'll try to cut you down. Just shake it off. Shake it off. <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. Well, I, had I stay out too late. <laughs> <laughs> so Pippin Carter was the one on the uh, on the boat that was that really arrogant guy talking to the oh. Egyptian. And Archibald Carrington does look like Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> what should I know about Archibald Carrington? He's a president. Oh, hasn't been in the States long. He's from England. But somehow, he doesn't quite come off on the level. What's that mean? I don't know. Call me stupid. Okay, stupid. Okay. But I just think the guy should be more concerned about museum property vanishing. His first month's on the job, too. That is, I mean, how does that happen? I don't know. I mean, his first gets... month on a job and a, a knife gets stolen? Come on. Kind of fishy, if you ask me. Have you dealt with Detective O'Reilly? Oh, really? Uh, he's really... He, he's been assigned to the case. I didn't get anything out of him, but you may have... You'll have better luck being a lady and all. Ooh, uh, he, oh. likes, he likes ladies. Crodfather does like ladies. Let's ask Crodfather about Crodfather. <laughs> tell me about yourself, Mr. Rhubarb. What's to tell? I'm a reporter for this paper. Probably since before you were born. I don't think he looks that old. I'm really old. But I want to know about the real Crodfather T. <laughs> Rhubarb. You mean there's another Crodfather T. Rhubarb? No sets of parents could be that cruel. <laughs> That's okay, Mr. Crodfather. You don't have to tell me about yourself if you don't want to. Rube. Who are you calling a... Oh, Rube's your nickname, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. Yeah. And so Low Fat is the guy at the Chinese Laundry... I don't know if he mm -hmm. has anything particular to say. Tell me about Low Fat. The old laundry guy? What's to tell? That's it. <laughs> He's just the old laundry guy. I could ask about our dad, but honestly, nobody really knows our dad, so I'm going to skip it. Who is Ziggy? It was by the name of Stardust. He's basically what we politely call a stool pigeon. Uh, the guy steals or squeals for cash. Amazing that the guy hasn't had his neck broken by now. Is something blowing against your microphone? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I hear, like, wind. It's, it suddenly sounds like you're in a tornado. No, nothing's uh, okay. changed. It's gone now. I'm going to pretend okay. that Crodfather was stuck in a tornado or a huge <laughs> gust of wind hit him ah, at that exact... Ah, blowing away! I <laughs> don't know what's going on. At that exact moment. <laughs> Let's see. We can. Add, we definitely should ask everyone about the, the, um, the lion ducker. Is there anything I should know about the Lion Decker Museum? I went down there. I did get that far in the investigation, at least. I met the museum's president, a stodgy old croaker named Archibald Carrington III. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I right. I'm overly concerned about the dagger. You might uh, see if you can get a little bit more out of him. I also spoke with a Pippin Carter. Nasty little squirt. He acts like he owes the world him a, he, uh, uh, a living. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he's the one who originally discovered the dagger in Egypt, along with some of the other junk in the exhibit. Now he was hot about the dagger. Took the whole thing like it was a personal stab at him. <laughs> I guess, no pun intended. No pun intended, yes. 
And I think that's basically... There's definitely a set amount of things. I, I can ask him about my inventory, but honestly, it, it doesn't help. Um, you can figure out what to do with the inventory without asking people about it. So I... We are gonna go. We're gonna leave. Leave this place. So... Never return. At this point, you can take a taxi, or sometimes you can cross the street. I was gonna say, cross the street. Crossy road time. Crossy road time? Yeah. Uh, so here's what happens. See, you see you get an arrow here. And we're just gonna cross the street. Nope. Well. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. And everybody not. just walks by you. If you don't look both ways, you'll be dead in no time flat. Thanks, Sierra. All right, so let's say I did this. Let's say I did this. There are no cars coming from this direction, right? Try again. Nope. Why? Because you have to look both ways. <sighs> that is not good enough. So what you have to do is look here and look there. And now you can cross the street. And you can't, you can't walk everywhere to get to your destination, but there are certain screens that have a street that you mm -hmm. can, you know. Let's go poke the homeless guy. What? <laughs> we don't do that where we come from in the South. I don't know about you just poking them. <gasps> Excuse me, sir. Go bother me, lady, and sleeping. But... He's out cold, but he has a tight grip on that newspaper. I really like the news. <laughs> I don't know what would be going on, or probably the prohib prohibition would be in the news at the moment, because we're in the 20s. 26? I believe so. I mean, there's a speakeasy. Pardon me. I don't know if we're in 26 or not. Pardon me. I I'm saw looking that date earlier. I'm looking for some information. Well, take yourself down to the library, then. He's Scottish, for reference. Pardon me, Sergeant, but I happen to be a reporter with the Trib. <laughs> oh, we'll strike up the band, then. Look, Lassie, I've been on me dogs all day. I hadn't had my lunch. I've had better things to do than go to job with some slip of a girl reporter. Go on with you now. Perfect. That is, that is what he sounds like. Close enough. Excuse me, but I really need some information. Oh, don't make me say that voice anymore, Lassie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> Look at this. I'm not in the mood to answer any more reporters' questions. So we do need to get information from him, but we don't have what we need to convince him yet. I think we can just go on in here, maybe? You knock politely. You hear the muffled response. Come in. And O'Reilly is incredibly Irish. The most stereotypical Irish you can... There you go. Oh, my word. He's That's so Irish. Much. You go for it, then. I am really bad at... <laughs> I'm so bad at Irish. Sharon me, God. I'm Detective O'Reilly. Damn it. I'm Laura Bow from the New York Daily Registered News Tribune. I'm looking into the burglary at the Lion Decker Museum, and I understand you're handling the case. Would it be possible for me to check your report? You gonna do it? No! I you can't be a reporter last year, a girl. The Trib only hires men. I am a reporter, sir, and you can check with my editor, Sam Augustini, if you don't believe me. I thought that crawd feather guy was going to be writing up the robbery article. Well, Crowdfather was assigned to it, but the story is mine now. Can I see that report, please? It's very technical, lass. I don't think you'll be learning much from it. Well, thank you for your concern, detective, but I'd like to be the judge of that. You're a determined girl, I'll say that much for you. Have a look, then. The file on the Lion Decker Museum burglary is nothing more than a single handwritten page. It mentions only one stolen object, the Dagger of Amon Ra. The burglar, or burglars, left no fingerprints or other clues. Their method of access to the museum is unknown. In summary, the police are baffled about the burglary at the museum at this point. Some of the parts of the report seem vague. The report is signed by Detective Ryan Hanrahan O'Reilly. There's only one page to this report. Where's the rest of it? Now that's all of it right now. It's rather vague, isn't it? 
Good police work takes time, and I'm a very busy man. I haven't had time to follow up on the burglary. So what if a museum loses a knife? There are people being murdered left and right in this city, dropping like flies. Cars are being stolen, booze is being smuggled into speakeasies. Pedestrians are being mugged, firebugs are burning down half the city. They're running out of grapes at the corner market and I've got a headache. And you know who gets to investigate all the crimes in this district? Me! I don't need any lousy reporters hanging around telling me my reports are vague, girly. Well, excuse me. Hot to corn to beef, forget your hot to corn to beef sandwich. Sandwich? Is that corned beef lean? A lean of corned beef? This is the leanest of corned beef in the city. Maybe in the country. So lean, the cow, she gonna be tipping over. You want a corned beef sandwich, lady?